Jack Master has released a statement. Jack Master, Jack Master, Jack Master. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the whole kerfuffle that happened a couple of years ago, no, last year actually. I made a video on it as well. Um, I had some wrong information on the back of it. I think essentially what happened last year was that he, Jack Master was playing at a festival, I think called Love Saves a Day or something along those kind of lines. And he got a little bit too fucked up. And the first story that came around was that he got so messed up in, I think, in the green room, they ended up, you know, um, defecating desecrating or defecating or whatever it may be called a kettle and you end up getting chucked out of the festival and this festival issues a statement and it kind of went a bit weird but then as the story kind of progressed and i think i made a video off the back of that straight away kind of laughing at it and kind of mocking it a little bit you know thinking it was funny but then later on it kind of got a bit serious when it kind of came to light that he was supposedly so intoxicated or so messed up that he was uh he sexually assaulted or sexually you know was a bit forward with some of the girls that are working at the festival tried to grope them tried to kiss them and it kind of got you know it sounded a little bit crazy um again um, no one knew what to believe and then i think the festival came out and issued a very strongly worded statement around what jack master did and it kind of got to a point where jack master had to kind of come out and clear it and kind of say look it wasn't what you initially thought it wasn't a funny situation it was something very very serious he stepped over set the mark and he kind of made these girls feel really unsafe. He kind of made the staff really annoyed as well. And he kind of, to his credit, came out with an apology and kind of restated that it was actually his fault. He was completely in the wrong. And he kind of really, really um, exposed, um, I guess, the hedonistic and often entitled nature of some electronic artists, right? Where they think they're able to kind of just do just about anything to anyone and not suffer any second um, consequences um unfortunately for him that wasn't the case and he kind of essentially got excommunicated from the scene dropped from a few festivals on the bill and stuff whatever and kind of took an extended sabbatical or extended break from um, anything concerning electronic music and we effectively haven't seen him for a year right we haven't seen jack master around for a year i i serendipity because again i'm just interested in just how people bounce back from these kind of you know public um, blacklistings or these public shamings and what happens um, again I've you know I always check up on Aaron Bondroff and see if he's around and see if he's okay uh, I always serendipity check out Jack Master's name on social and see if people are saying and whether it's talking about him and I guess for the most part prior to any kind of word coming out because he just issued a statement the other day but prior to any word of what he was doing and how he was around I kind of got the impression that people were missing him I saw loads of tweets online of people saying he can't wait for Jack Master to come back they want to hear him play again you know because he has a very particular way of playing a very banger banger lace kind of way of playing his sets um he has a very captive fan base obviously the scottish uh contingent are really really big on jack master and he kind of again just you know is a bit of a lad behind the decks kind of represents every raver that's that kind of always had aspirations of playing in those kind of big festivals so it's understandable why he'd have a really big fan base and i think for the most part most people didn't really know what happened anyway but i say the day thing they just went to see their their favorite dj play again but jack master's made an, a statement um recently just now um i'm assuming because he's probably gearing up for a comeback he's probably um looking for some level of acceptance of his mistakes but he's just a quite lengthy statement talking about everything and i want to read it out quickly now and then we're going to kind of speak about what this means for his career going forward da, 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 da. i put you on facebook so there you go so this is jack master statement on facebook on the third for fma for Thursday, right? Um, it says the following. Um, as many of you are aware, I was responsible for unacceptable behavior after my performance at a festival in Bristol last year. I am sorry for the hurt I caused and all the people I let down. The posting of an amb ambiguous statement led to rumors and conjecture as to what really happened, right? And that was the one that I initially replied back to. I think the one about him shitting in the kettle, which obviously didn't turn out to be true or maybe partly true, but that wasn't actually the full story. There were other things that were actually of more serious consequences or more of a serious level of a uh, crime. During a 20 minute episode in the busy backstage area, I grabbed and tried to kiss several women while intoxicated and out of control. Whilst many people may think I used intoxication as an excuse, I would be the first to admit that you simply cannot excuse the type of behavior. I take full responsibility for my poor choices surrounding this situation. I'm taking it very seriously. You know, and, you have to, and I think when, when the initial and bigger statement came out, obviously that didn't happen, but he did he did take full responsibility towards it at the end. Love saves the day. Um, I recognize his apology. The two ladies in question or the several ladies in question that were tied into a statement also sounded like they took an acceptance of his apology. I think he reached out to them separately as well and was profusely sorry. So I think he did he did everything that everyone doesn't do in those situations, right? He didn't double down. He didn't go quiet. He didn't excuse it. He didn't blame mental health. He took full responsibility of his actions and essentially stepped away from the limelight, pulled away. I'm assuming he lost quite a bit of money off the back of that too and kind of did the, the work in private to kind of get back to where he needs to be so all, so far so good right 
Then the statement continues. Some people have been asking where I've been. And the simple answer is that I've had to take an extended period out to respect others, the gravity of the situation, and to work on my health, both mental and physical. So again, he's apologizing and then laying um, down what the kind of introspective work that needs to be done in order to kind of get back to where he needs to get to. I've seen some comments online that are saying that he's made an excuse for mental health. I don't think that's true. I think if you do what he'd done in the festival, right, you have to under, you have to assume... I think we've all got a bit fucked up, right? I've got a bit fucked up at work. I've got a bit fucked up in festivals and stuff and done some stuff that I probably regret, right? There are occasions that you do some stuff that's just because you got too excited, right? You've gotten too self-indulgent with the free drinks. You've got a bit too crazy. But sometimes it can be a mirror. It can be an ext- uh, an amplifier for something that's going on in your life, right? When you see somebody at a bar somewhere on their own, sitting at the bar, necking down whiskey after whiskey after whiskey you don't automatically think oh that guy's got his life together there is a part of you that thinks oh i wonder what's going on in that guy's in that guy's life i wonder what's happened right you sometimes think of that now it could just be him just sitting at the bar on a friday night after work and just having a couple of whiskeys or it could be that something has led him down that path right if that's the case then it's it's okay for him to finally get to a position where you start you start to maybe do the hard work of maybe figuring out why you're doing the thing that you're doing and that takes some introspective look at your mental and physical state it's perfectly fine so i don't understand why some people are looking at it as him excusing it it's not it's him trying to come to grips as to what led to the situation that he did because obviously it's not normal it's not something that he'd probably do if he was sober it's not something that he'd probably do if he was just tipsy right it's something that he'd done obviously when you was completely out of control and what led to him to be out that out of control when you're performing right when you're at a gig when you're working somewhere when you're in a professional setting when you're working and i think as well there is part of you that is a new performer i know where it feels mean i was an entertainer there is a part of you that sometimes wants to resp- that sometimes no, sometimes there is a part of you that should be very respectful of the people that you're working with, right? The organizers, the sound guy, the PA, uh, the people working behind the bar, the, the person that signed you in at the front desk, the person that gives you a wristband. There is a part of you that wants to make their life easier because you didn't know how difficult or how hard of a job that is. And essentially, you're all working together to make a good show, right? That girl is helping you out or that's that's making sure you've got all your, you've got all your stuff on your rider or blah 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 they're all part of the same group so if anything you want to treat them with more respect than you would anybody right because you're all in this together so there is an idea that you're meant to look after those kind of people so you'd assume what he's doing isn't necessarily something he'd do if he was sober or if he was of clear mind so if you to do the kind of mental and mental and physical analysis is quite a good thing so i don't really understand some of the the stick he's getting behind saying that you know there are maybe some extended reason that kind of lets him get to that point i think it's fairly safe to say that there has to be a reason why he got himself that fucked up during a festival and decided to do the things that he done right well it doesn't excuse it but it's good to in, it's good to analyze why you got to that point and change tact right um, anyway, the, the statement continues. It's been important to identify and understand how and why I could reach a state that would result in me putting other human beings and myself in a position of distress, which is very true. And especially somebody that works in your industry. I think there's some level. I think that's what happened with the Louis C.K. thing, right? Even though the story was a bit messed up. That Louis C.K. thing was me even more messed up because it was two fellow comedians, right? Two female comedians who work in the same scene, right? You should know, I think, as a as a person of influence or i would say power somebody that's got influence somebody that's got maybe a bigger platform than the other girls you should know your position and know just how difficult it is how many scumbags they've had to deal with in their own career that you shouldn't be tr- you shouldn't you should go above above and beyond to make their lives as easy as you can because you know just how many dorks or just how many scumbags and jerks are on in the industry so for jack Monster to do that was a bit of a letdown right essentially because i think those girls are maybe expecting that kind of behavior from you know drunk guests or drunk punters that know no better but not a fellow artist not someone that's involved in the industry that's sometimes that's not, that's where you kind of get a bit like come on dude man we work in the same scene what the fuck are you doing right um this is an industry built on hedonism and escapism which is very true i think for the art for the attendees not for us i don't think so we shouldn't be doing that but hey which i have lived for the past year um we live what well, live for in the past but there is a human element to what you you don't see I grew up around mental illness and alcohol abuse and I coped with my mother's death as a young age by focusing on music, which is very true. You, if you read any interview of Jack Master, he always mentions, you know, how pivotal his mother's death was. I think his mother died when he was in his teenage, in teenage years as well, right? So something that really, really hit home to something he thinks about quite often. But again, something that he always points to as a deciding factor of how he steered his life around, right? In terms of where he is now. 
For a long time leading up to this incident, I was using substances as a crutch to mask deeply rooted issues stemming from my childhood, which I think a lot of us do, that I now realise I was too afraid and embarrassed to confront. As a result, in recent years, I found myself slipping into patterns reflecting my upbringing, which is very true. I think you see that a lot with a lot of people that come into money. I think you see that a lot in some someone like, um, who is that guy, Avicii. In that documentary, you saw how he, he kind of dealt with the pressures of being such a big EDM act at such a big at such a young age um having access to all these different people having all these pressures to in, in front of him, and the way he dealt with it was by drinking himself stupid so so much so that his liver failed yeah he was what 24 26 something stupid like that right dying of alcoholism is really 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 bad so you got you saw how bad it can get with those kind of situations um with my dad's health increasingly rapidly declined last year in an attempt to distract myself from reality i again resorted to substances and excessive work schedule instead of dealing with my emotions while i'm not excusing what happened in any of this i realized that i had to step back and seek help to deal with things properly to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again I accept that I can't change the past, but over the last 12 months, I have made my significant changes to address the destructive patterns of my lifestyle and take the time to understand how my actions can impact others. There are by no means quick fixes, nor does the time I put reflect, rectify my behavior, but it's start of a journey which I'm totally committed to. I hope this goes some way to reassure that I have taken this seriously and understand my responsibility going forward. Again, so far so good, right? I don't see anything wrong with that statement. I think he did something really, really cool. He came out, admitted his faults, um, really took responsibility for it. And again, he took one year away. Now, some of it is partly due to the scene telling him, look, stay away. We're not going to book you. I don't want protests in front of my door. I don't want people to like protest by not buying tickets and shit. Like, no one wants that extra hassle. But a lot of it has to do with himself, right? He purposely took the time out, right? You saw what happened with DJ Constantine with his kind of foray around the statements he made about Black Madonna. He still was out there promoting himself and going to... He didn't really give a fuck, right? But Jack Muscle has kind of really... Um, understood the severity of his actions, right? I think through his apology, through him clearing up, through the, I think you, I think you would have saw if he was a dick, right? If he was a really bad guy, I think you would have saw a lot more stories come out off the back of this. I think you would have saw the girls that were involved in the situation really come and kind of, really kind of throw him under the bus because they felt as if he didn't learn lesson or they felt as if like he wasn't taking it seriously enough. But I think the fact that everyone kind of moved on and kind of accepted his apology shows that. Number one, he was very sorry for what he did. It also shows that deep down there is a good dude there who kind of sometimes gets a little bit crazy and goes a bit out of control for the most part, right? You think that's that's so far so good. But no, that isn't so far so good because people on Instagram, people on Twitter actually had a lot to say about this, right? Um, a lot of bad things to say. Um, here's one of them. I said lack of empathy on social media, right? This is my kind of statement. I think I searched for it and saw online. So um, no, let's, let's, go for, let's go for this statement first of all. Let's go for this one. I think that one's a good one, the guy that she mentioned, but let's go for this one first. So this is a statement from a young lady on Twitter. It says the following. Um, Jack Master's apology is only so he can come back and DJ again as the timing is constantly just before the summer season of festivals. I doubt the extent of the sincerity behind his words. If it was any other job workplace, he would have been sacked and that would be the end of it. Which is a really, really, really harsh, unfair and a pretty contradictory statement because his apology is partly due to so he can come back and make a living. We have to accept that. Fair. But he's taken a year off. He's been cancelled for a year. Best part for a year. Let's say he took six months off and the, the scene cancelled him for another six months. But he's been away for one whole year. Earning money, I don't know how. He's not touring. Um, he might be earning money through the streams of his mi mixes. He might be earning money from production. He's uh, people buying his uh, vinyl, whatever. I don't know how he's making his money. People in the scene might be supporting him. I don't know. He might have savings. I don't know. Not my business. But he's not been able to make an honest living for the best part of a year. In a scene that, in the only thing, doing the only thing that he knows how to do, doing the only thing that he's really good at, right? The only thing that he's actually been able to succeed at and kill for the last few years, right? He's taken a year off. So how long is he meant to be away? Should he have never have a job again? Should he change profession? Should he move away? What's the adequate thing there to do? We have to accept, like I said, yes, he did come back and make apology because he wants to come back to the scene. But isn't that what he meant to do? Is there no level of apology that could make things right anymore? Weird. Then um, the second thing is festivals. Of course, the festival sees Jack Master. He, he, you know, he's the biggest festival act out. Right, one of the biggest ones out. I'm sure a lot of people want to go see him. And it says, I doubt the extent of sincerity behind his words. If it was any other what job work person, he would be sacked now at the end of it. Not very much true. I think if you got sacked for that kind of sexual misconduct or being a bit of a sloppy cunt, you'd get sacked and you'd have an opportunity to never get another job somewhere else again. You maybe not be able to put that previous workplace on your 
Listen, references, because you wouldn't want them to call up and find out why you got sacked. But you'd be okay, right? You'd be able to get another job again. I'm sure you would be able to, right? So I, th that's the thing that is a little bit disconcerting, I think, with this cancel culture we have going on at the moment. It's a lack of empathy. No one really has empathy towards anyone anymore. Like, you get cancelled or you get... I think public shaming is... There's, there's, a, there's a good aspect of public shaming, right? Because I think what public shaming does for people that are social justice warriors is that it, adv it, it kind of steps in when the police can't do anything, right? When you can't get punished by law. Because effectively, can Jack Master get punished by law for what he done? Probably not. Unless the, 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 the women in question go, you know, pursue charges through the courts. So it's, going to, it's a long-winded way to get some, some kind of retribution for what happened to you. But what you can do is publicly shame the guy, make him embarrassed, have all his peers and people around fans who have a look at him and think oh that's a bad thing to do this guy's a scumbag fine so it kind of steps in when the law can't step in for you but there should be a point where you get publicly shamed and then you get welcomed back in again if you've made amends right you should be able to be welcomed back in it because again it's not a heinous, heinous enough crime where you should be getting thrown under the jail right it's just the thing that you did socially that was um untoward that was uh, a little bit disrespectful. That was a little bit. That was very disrespectful. That was respectful of the community you work in, the people that you work for or you work with. Fine, but after you've made amends, you should be able to come back in, right? But some people, it seems not. And then another quote here again, showing another point of lack of empathy. I got another Twitter quote from somebody also that was unhappy with his apology. And this is a following quote from another lady on, on social media. It says, all of the techno Twitter bros tweeting how thrilled they are about the return of Jack Master with absolutely no mention about him admitting sexual harassing several women. Which is neither here or there, right? Because I think people being excited about somebody come, making a comeback is, you know, the quintessential redemption story. It's the arc of most uh, popular action hero movies or movies in general that we see. The arc of, like, you know, um, uh, the hero's journey, right? In terms of you know somebody uh, rising up like being a, pr a prudicious talent falling off the surface face of the earth and then rising back up again everyone likes to see that story comeback story it's amazing the fact that he profusely apologized at the moment he didn't just go silent and not acknowledge anything right he apologized made the men step away from the limelight for a whole year and kind of tried to make uh kind of try to work on himself and try to get himself back in a in a better place and all we can hope for is that when he comes back he's a changed person right we only have to we have to wait for him to present himself in public again to see whether or not he's changed that's all we have to hope on that's it nothing else that we can do so the fact that people are getting excited about it is neither here or there should people get excited and then mention the sexual abuse thing when they're when they're talking about it or should they say he he apologized for it a year ago he apologized for it again i'm just excited that he's back because he's apologized right and i'm a fan of him so again i don't really see i think the lack of empathy is very very bizarre because again it just goes to show that people just want someone to get cancelled forever and then I think this guy kind of summed up my thoughts on it um, quite succinctly, sequently or very precisely here with this statement he made here. Let me see if I can find his statement. Where is he? There. So this guy's statement was very, very true. It's something I really agree with. Um, put it up on your screen. So I said here the following. This Jack Master hate is indicative of a wider societal issue in which people are not allowed to make mistakes and learn from them. Once someone is cancelled, they remain cancelled forever and cannot ever re-enter society. Mistakes are not permanent. People can grow. And he, and he goes, explains it here on the bottom one. Um, explain to me why people must not be able to better uh, to become better people and learn from their mistakes. I will retract. Otherwise, you guys can get fucked. And somebody in the bottom here replied um don't want to don't want to jump in and have this blow back in my face but it's a weird mate like due to his current social climate sometimes this with folk it's hard to tell if it's just a mistake or if it's actually a prologue series or unsettled behavior which i would agree with but i think usually what happens if you notice any kind of social shaming any kind of thing that's a, kind of stem from sexual abuse or sexual harassment what you realize is that when someone does something like with the guy from uh the guy from uh, Shia Compton, right? Um, from the She, from the Chai, that show. When one allegation comes up, loads follow if you're a scumbag, right? When you when you get accused of one form of sexual harassment, somebody else somewhere around the world who also has had suffer from your kind of, you know, overzealous hands or whatever it may be, will kind of say, oh, it's safe now and it will come out and say something. So the thing, the fact that this only occurred in isolation, I'm not going to say he hasn't done it prior, but I don't think it was to this extent. I think he has been, I think it's evident if you've seen Jack Master DJ on Boiler Rooms or you've seen YouTube videos, it's, it's evident that he does get super fucked behind the, behind the decks. And I think that's part of his charm at that point because he was a raver, something that you can identify with, say, oh yeah, he's one of us behind the decks. 
So it's 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 not too far fetched to think if he's so sloppy behind the decks, what happens when he comes off the decks, right? But I think the fact that nothing else came after, like of that kind of level of severity or that level of seriousness, is kind of evident that maybe he's not as much of a bad guy as we think. I would say, right? This guy continues. But from what I've been told, in case it's the latter, and accounting for one incident, accounting for every little thing you've done. Honestly, cancel culture frazzles my brain sometimes, right? Uh, like in no way am I saying someone, anyone should be made to made a pariah and ex excelled into the woods or anything. But it's such a new concept. Where does it start and where does it end? And the guy says again i agree mate i think it's very much a case of the latter here but why can't he be allowed to learn from his mistakes and grow from them what does it take for people online to accept an apology and knowledge that personal growth is possible if we get and it's a, this random girl if we forgive sexual abusers and what message does that send to the victim what does that mean what does it mean what such abusers should not remain celebrities for the sake of, of themselves their past victims and anyone else i don't know okay that's a very weird but anyway Jack Master's back for the most part, it seems like. Um, I'm interested to see what the reaction will be like when he comes back on stage. I think for the most part, what this will show is that most people don't care. Uh, people will be okay with it. They'll just forgive him and continue. I think there'll be a small percentage of people online, on social, the work people that will be annoyed by it. But I think for the most part, most people, the everyday person doesn't really care um, what he effectively done. As long as he's sorry for it, they'll kind of move on. But I'm interested to see what he does as a person. Interested to see what this industry does with him, how they introduce him back into the scene. Interested to, to see how his fellow DJs treat him, especially some of the more politically minded DJs out there, how they're going to um, address the situation, whether they're going to talk about it or not. And just in general, to see how it kind of evolves over the next few weeks. Because again, I'm sure this is kind of a precursor to him making an appearance back on festival stages and all that malarkey. But I'm, I'm assuming it will go down pretty well for him, but there might be some trepidation. And also, I'm assuming, I'm interested to see how he conducts himself as well as a person behind a booth, where we're going to see the same kind of haphazard um, genius behind the decks, so we're going to go see someone a bit more controlled and a bit more focused into his expertise. And we're going to see an evolution of him as an artist going forward. But I guess we have to watch this space.